the naked body, a top to bottom tour through a human being. This week, The Inner Ear and Balance by Will Ashley Fenn. The vestibular system is a series of fluid filled tubes within the inner ear on either side of the skull. It assists in your sense of balance by detecting movements of the head. It's made up of two distinct parts, the semicircular canals and the otolith organs. So as the name suggests, semicircular canals are tubes, shaped a bit like bicycle tyres. There are three of these canals on each side of the head. One of them is horizontal, and the other two are vertical, and are at roughly 90 degrees to each other. The canals are responsible for detecting head rotation movements. Because of their orientations, each canal is most sensitive to movement in a particular plane. When you nod, shake, or tilt your head, the fluid in the canals doesn't start to move as quickly as the head does. It's a bit like how, when a car accelerates, you'll push backwards into your seat. This causes the bending of a membrane at the base of the canals, and this bending is detected by bundles of sensitive hair cells. The activation of the three canals on each side can be compared in order to work out what head movement has actually occurred. The other component of the vestibular system is the otolith organs. These are responsible for detecting linear accelerations, forwards-backwards movements, such as accelerating in a car, and up and down movements, such as in a lift. They're embedded with crystals of calcium carbonate, called otoconia. When you move forwards and backwards or up and down, these small crystals roll about, and they displace bundles of hair cells. The brain can then work out the direction of an acceleration by piecing together all the forces that it feels from the otolith organs. But sometimes the vestibular system can also be responsible for making you feel ill, as in car sickness. A lot of the research around motion sickness has focused on the idea of a sensory mismatch. This is the idea that your eyes might be seeing things in the car that aren't moving, but your ears can feel every bump, speed change and turn. Another cause of mismatch is the so-called Coriolis or cross-coupling effect. This is particularly well documented in pilots as well as car passengers, and it occurs because a passenger has their head tilted to the side at a particular angle. For example, their head may be resting on their left shoulder while the car is going around a right-hand bend in the road. The combination of this head tilt and the turn around a bend tricks the brain to thinking that the head is rotated when it actually hasn't. This then conflicts with a signal from the otolith organs, and in fact one trick to reduce car sickness may be to tilt your head in the same direction as the bend in the road. It seems bizarre that the brain thinks the best way to deal with this sensory mismatch is by making you feel ill and then emptying the contents of your stomach. There's a theory that the brain interprets the mismatch as the effect of a toxin causing damage to the sensitive hair cells in the inner ear, and it then tries to get rid of this imaginary toxin as quickly as possible. Nevertheless, you are heavily reliant on your vestibular system just to be able to keep upright when you walk down the street, and hopefully that's some consolation for the next time you feel a bit carsick.